this book right here proves that the creator economy is just going to keep growing and growing. This book right here, Nearbound by Jared Fuller, I read recently. And honestly, I knew, I think like everybody else, I knew the creator economy is just going to keep going. I knew more and more creators are going to get monetized, obviously on YouTube, but they're going to be selling templates. They're going to be selling uh, their services. More and more companies are catching on to it. And because of this book right here that I'm going to explain to you throughout this video, uh, if you're a business owner, if you're a creator, you're going to want to watch this because there's money to be made in the creator economy. So it only took forever, but B2B finally recognizes that people don't buy their normal ways anymore. It used to be that you would create a funnel and you would take a whole bunch of money and you would dump it into an ad campaign and at the end of that would spit out a whole bunch of money. It was a pretty cool time. We all loved it but that's not really the case anymore. I think because we all know what a fun funnel is. Like as a consumer, as I'm watching maybe an ad, whatever, I click on it maybe, but for the most part, I'm not really gonna buy. And what's really interesting is if you really think about the last thing you bought, you probably agree just from your own behavior. You don't even really need to know. You don't even really need to understand what I'm saying. As you buy, recognize your own behavior. And again, B2B is finally catching on to this. Here's what I mean. So Jared Fuller, he used to work for places like HubSpot and all these different places. He think he created a bunch of other stuff. I don't really know, but he's a pretty smart guy. And all their research shows that ultimately we don't like to buy that way. We like to buy from the who. And I think a lot about like, for example, things like AG1, Athletic Greens. I don't even really know too much research about it. I don't even really know if it actually works. What I do know though is every podcast I listen to from Joe Rogan to Andrew Huberman to Chris Williamson, they all drink it. So I was like, well, I need better health. I'm gonna buy Athletic Greens. I'm not gonna do much, that much research. Why? Because I believe in the person. And what's interesting is we wanna buy from people that has made it to where we wanna go. That's the kind of the, the main point of today's video. We wanna buy from people that's been there before. And so when you look at someone that looks healthy, like Andrew Huberman or Joe Rogan, you go, well, if they're taking it, then maybe it'll work for me. This is also true for software, for product and services. If you're not leveraging creators and you're own, owning a business, you're out of your damn mind. If you're a creator and you're not creating content that maybe someone that you really would like to work with wants to partner with you, then ultimately, again, you're missing out too. There's so much more room to grow because companies are finally starting to catch on and they're gonna to wanna to be spending money. Like I just recently talked to a company that said, they were taking away about $20,000 a month in ad revenue that they normally spend, and they're gonna be giving it to creators. They want to partner with creators in doing this. Now, notice I said the word partner. I don't mean like your normal sponsorships that maybe you see today, right? Where someone just pays you some money, they do a review and that's great. What I mean is instead of them creating content, they're going to partner with creators and co-create the experience, the content with them. And the reason they're doing this is because ultimately they're not as good as creating content as you, right? Or someone that makes content. They don't think about it every day and it saves them a ton of money not having to hire someone full time to make content. And on top of all of that, we don't want to see content from companies these days. Like it's boring. They only talk about their products or services and it's kind of like, or maybe they throw up a testimonial here and there, but for the most part, it's just boring content that nobody wants to watch. Instead, we want to hear from creators that normally create things and hear about the experience that they went through, how this product or service, this software helped them overcome where they're trying to get to and ultimately got successful. Hence the reason why, let's take a case study like Notion. Notion completely blew up this year. Well, in the last like three years. I think they're valued at like a billion dollar company. And it's because they partnered with partners. Basically anybody and their mom can create a template over on Notion and sell it. And what this does is if you buy it, well, you got to download Notion for it. There you go. Guess what? They get more users. And on top of that, the content is bomb. If you go on YouTube right now, look at like Thomas Frank and a bunch of all these other creators, they're walking you through how they create things on Ocean. And again, this serves two purposes. Number one, they ultimately probably can sell the templates, but also some people are just gonna watch it, go download Notion, do it themselves. Notion wins regardless. And the best part is Notion didn't have to create anything. So if you look at these people, even if you're a service, service provider, you can do this too and you should be doing this. And actually, in fact, right now, this is how I know it's blowing up. I work for a software company called Keep. 
K-E-A-P, Keep. It's an automation platform. And I'm getting ready for a workshop I'm putting on actually explaining everything I just walked you through and how these business owners can take advantage of it right now and leverage it. So let me get ready for that. Uh, I got to put some finishing touches on it. This is another good example, right? So Notion, or not Notion, but uh, Vibe Board. Notice some content I was doing and sent me this thing out. This, again, perfect example of how they're leveraging working with partners. So they reached out to me because they saw some content I was doing and said, hey, if we sent you out, by the way, you guys like my new vision board Kayla made me? Black belt this year, goals, family healthy and happy, monetization on YouTube, that's coming up next more public speaking. One of the things I kind of realized too, if I wanted to create more partnerships and, and, and get better clients, I gotta speak on stages. So it's uh, something I'm gonna work on this year. Um, but anywho, one of the things, so one thing I like to use the vibe board for is for coaching, mainly because instead of doing like slide decks, I'll actually just kind of pre-write out what I'm planning on talking about. And then that way I can like zoom into it like this and then continue writing so that way people can kind of catch up. So anyway, this is one way I'm using it. But again, right now I'm doing it on accident, okay? So Viveboard has sent me this thing out because they're like, hey, I think you could use this and we want to co-create some content with you and I'm using it. I'm literally plugging them in this YouTube video and they didn't even pay me for it. Why? Because it's just here. I'm using it. It's something that I'm using. So anyway, let me go prep for this, uh, prep for this training. I'll come back and I'll explain more. Bye-bye, mama. Oh, baby pull-ups. Okay, workout in progress. As long as I don't get interrupted by little baby again. But workshop went really well. I um, love doing those because I, I don't know about you, but when I do workshops, webinars, anything like that, uh, master classes, whatever you want to call them, I fill in like a beginning, middle and end, but the middle space, I kind of just leave open, um, mainly because of just stuff comes to me and I'm like, I want to talk about it. I don't like to have too rigid of, um, of an agenda. And uh, for me anyway, I feel like they work a little bit better, but I was supposed to work out this morning. I had every intention of getting a lift in. I was like, literally I was giving me a little bath last night and I was like, all right, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. That way I can read a little bit and then at like 6, I'll work out and uh, get ready for work and it'll be great and that'll be amazing. But, you know, 5 o'clock rolls around and you're like, you know what? I could use an extra hour of sleep. So, anyway, I personally, honestly though, I'm pretty sure I'm just like self-sabotaging on purpose because I just, I don't really love working out in the morning. Everything's cold, my joints are, you know, not warmed up, whatever. Um, but like a, a lunchtime lift session is like perfect. And like, I guess, what would it be the, the word for it? It like just re wakes you up from like the morning meetings and whatever gets you out of the office, especially when you're working from home. So honestly, I might just leave it like this. I work out in the afternoons at lunch and that's probably the best bet. me but like I'm that old person now if there's someone driving by my house in there like they must have had some subwoofers in the in the trunk like stop by the house and there's bumping music and listen I was in high school once I had a 1989 Toyota Corolla had some subs in it thought it was cool I'm realizing now just how annoying I was uh, so what does this have to do with the creator economy and like we were talking about earlier how does the book nearbound kind of like 
help solidify it. How is this any different than maybe what you've already heard? Well, considering that like, at first it was just brand sponsorships, which is still happening. This is more than that, right? Companies now, including SaaS company I work for, software company I work for, big places like HubSpot are taking away money from ad normal advertising. They drop ad dollars into Meta, Google, whatever. And they're reallocating those resources towards influencers to partners. And it makes sense, right? It brings down the cost of acquisition for them in terms of how much they're spending. Let me put it this way for the creators that don't really normally care about this kind of stuff. Basically, normally you're spending a whole bunch of money on ads and let's say it oftentimes takes you $200 of spending money on ads to acquire an actual client. That includes how many leads you get, leads go down to how many calls you get booked, which goes down to your conversion rate, which then results into how many customers you get. And on average, that price, cost of acquisition, continually goes up. I mean, for big B2B companies, I think in, in this book they reference how it's like, I forgot the exact number. It's a lot of freaking money to cost to acquire a customer, which means it takes 48 months of that person being a customer for them to make their money back, which is just not a great business model. And it keeps increasing over time. There's arguments to why that is, but point is just that's just the way it is right now. So they need to change up their strategy. And so the cool thing about with content creators, like maybe you watching this today, is you already have a pool of people around you. Their ideal target, their ideal customer is already one of your subscribers. And so if they could just come to you and say, hey, we'd like to do a partnership with you, again, sponsored deals that we see on YouTube or brand deals you see on YouTube today is kind of like a V1 of it. I think even more so, we'll start to see businesses be really smart about who they target so it becomes part of their everyday content and doesn't feel like an ad. So example like I gave earlier was the vibe board, right? Like me talking about the vibe board in this video is not because they didn't sponsor it, right? They didn't give me money for that. I just am happening to use it in my everyday life. And so yeah, it's ingrained now in how I make content even, how I work with clients. And so it's more than just a one-off piece of content. The goal is to get these companies to work with us as creators on an ongoing basis because it's a win-win for them, right? Obviously, they'll get more leads or potentially more products being purchased. And then for us, the really neat part that you don't really see too much with like brand partnerships, which is a little bit different, but you'll definitely see more in things like software companies is when these companies then put ads behind it. So I think uh, Artlist.io is one of the companies doing this where you'll make a piece of content about the product and then they'll push ads behind it so more people see it. So this is, I think, perfect for creators. And the reason why is because it gets more eyeballs on your brand and you don't have to pay for the advertising. For them, it's not as much money that they have to put in to getting people to see it because they're just retargeting your current audience or targeting people that are similar like similar content to you. So again, it brings down the cost of acquisition for them. And it's a little bit more, it's a lot easier sales process for them because you mentioned it, right? If your audience already trusts you or whatever, and they see this ad, they're more likely to go buy it, which then brings me to this point. And I think like, it's pretty darn important and it's been talked about, but like, it's the importance of really doing stuff you actually wanna do and working with brands or products or services that you really actually enjoy. Like for me, like after especially working with the Vibe Board, I realized that like I couldn't do this with something that I really didn't see value in. And so before you go on and sign a contract, like I think it's really important to be like, can I see the product, can I test it, can I work with it before I agree basically to make content? Because what if you get sent out the thing, you sign the money, cause it's like, okay, it's good money. You use it and it sucks. Well, at least for me anyway, like it's hard to make content with stuff I think sucks, unless it's like me just lighting up the product, which I don't think is a good look. Now, there's one final part to like the creator economy and, and, and how partnerships are kind of like the biggest part of this economy. So there's the creator economy, and then again, businesses are moving away from ads and moving into more what Nirbhan calls the who economy, meaning just people buy from people, and if you recommend something, they're gonna buy. I mean, think about it, right? Every single book that I probably have gotten has come directly from a relationship. It didn't come from an ad. I didn't see an ad for a book and thought, oh, it'd be good. I either heard it on Joe Rogan or I heard it on Andrew Huberman or I heard it on Chris Williamson podcast. 
and I wanted more context. Like the author was on the podcast, and so I was like, oh, well, they're hanging out with somebody I know, like, and trust, and that book sounds interesting, so I'll pick it up. Or literally someone I know was like, take this book and go read it. And so I grabbed it or bought it on Amazon. I don't borrow books. I don't borrow books. I'll be honest with you. I hate borrowing books. Because I just write all in it and I feel bad. And I don't like when people borrow books from me. Can't stand it. Because I never get it back. And it's really annoying. It's not because I don't get it back because they don't, like, they read it and then they want to steal it from me. They just don't read it. And then I feel like that asshole being like, hey, can I get my book back? Because I know you're not going to read it. Side note, I know. But regardless, at the end of the day, I think it's really important to capitalize on this, guys. It's going to be a really interesting couple of years. All right, ladies and gents, workout is done. Let's wrap this up. So the point of this video is very simple. Yes, I think we all knew the creator economy was good because of products like AG1, the vibe board even. But if you're a business owner and you are service-based, for example, now is the time to start thinking about how you can partner with other creators. Who is out there that is a creator that has your audience that you want to connect with that you can partner with? And there's different ways to partner with them, right? Number one is the normal, hey, I'm going to send you some money or maybe you can come to my mastermind or you can come to this event for free. Just write a blog post or make a YouTube video about it. That's one way. Another interesting way is co-creating content. So you reach out to them and say, hey, I'd like to partner on a new YouTube video where we talk about my service that I do and I'll give it to you for free and have you go through it. You see this a lot in the fitness, fitness industry with like personal trainers and they'll put, you know, thought leaders or content creators through a workout and that's their way of creating sponsorships, if you will, for service based. So if you're a business owner, and you haven't thought about that, you should start thinking about it now because you're going to get left behind. Majority of businesses, I'm telling you, if, if SaaS companies are doing it now and some of these bigger companies are starting to look into it, again, it's something that's coming to the pipe for pretty much everyone because, again, the cost of acquisition is just ridiculous right now. And if you're a content creator, yes, we all know on YouTube, when you create for everybody, I think the amount of money you get paid from your ads and all that stuff gets lower than if it's super niched out. I think the really good example of that is, is channels that, for example, target or talk about like finance. They're going to attract a certain type of audience, which is why their ads cost more or their ad sense or whatever. They get more uh, per view or per click or however the hell that works. The other the same way to think about this is the same. If you can attract a certain kind of audience that's super niched out and you build trust and community with your people, you're going to get reached out to from companies. And if you're not, you should reach out to them. Let them know you have an outstanding audience. You want to help them generate some leads because you love their product and you want to, you're interested in seeing how a partnership can form. So with that being said, I want to hear your thoughts on this. One, is this anything different than maybe you've heard before about the creator economy? But also, how are you going to take what I taught in this lesson today or in this video, whatever the hell we want to call it, in this vlog? And uh, how are you going to take it? I know for me personally, I'm going to be probably creating some more co-content creator. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to create content with other people. <laughs> Businesses is, is what I'm planning on doing um, and also leveraging other people's audience a little bit differently. And I'm doing that actually through my co-host webinar, which if you go to RaylanDavis.com, you can kind of see more. I've been starting to look into it a little bit more than um, I did in the past, but now definitely looking into it. So that being said, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, do all that fun stuff, and I'll catch you all in the next video.